Today is all about pigs. That's up next. everyone, this is Dwayne with Edge of Nowhere Farm and we're coming to you here at the beginning of April in 2024. So if you guys have been following us along, you know that we spent a lot of time talking about fruit trees here on the farm, but the reality is we are a completely holistic farm. We have livestock here on the farm that we wanna make sure we cover with you guys today because it all integrates one with the other. So what I wanna do today is talk a little bit about the how and the why we raise pigs here on the farm. So we'll talk a little bit first about how and how we have all of these pins set up for these animals to make sure that they're as healthy as they possibly can be and they're integrated here on the farm. One of the things you'll notice first about the infrastructure behind me is the pin. Now what we use here on the farm are T-posts and pig panels really because of the hard ground that we're dealing with here. You know, we've talked about that before. We've got caliche about a foot to two feet down. That's just rock solid stuff. And the ground is very hard. So T posts are just fine for us. Now we've been raising pigs here in Arizona with essentially the same type of setup for the last six years. And we have never had a pig get out of these pens. So one of the things all of our animals need here on the farm is shade. Pigs are no exception. So what we do with our shade structures, we've got what we call our bacon barn, which is essentially a large hut that we had built out of steel. So we have a friend of ours that built that for us out of steel. We have that completely enclosed. Now that enclosure fits about 10 to 12 full-size pigs. So that gives them plenty of shade. When we first bring them on the farm, you know, we have up to 20 piglets that we've got at a time. All 20 of those easily fit in the structure that is behind me here. So a much smaller structure made out of wood. The little pigs are not quite as destructive as the big ones and that's plenty of shade for them when they're nice and small. Everything here on the farm needs water. Lori actually built our IBC tote water a few years back and it is doing fantastic. We use that single water for up to about 20 pigs with no issues whatsoever. We usually have it covered with a black shade so that way we don't have as much algae buildup. So now of course food, you'll see the pigs behind me here, they're eating here this morning. Now the feeders that we've used in the past, we've used a piano style feeder, which is a feeder made out of wood. It's got multiple heads for pigs to be in. Now if you're only raising maybe six to eight animals, that's just fine. But we did notice that with that feeder, they step in it, even with uh, covering on there, they'll get their, their feet in there. Also when it rains, which is not real often, water builds up in there. So we've decided to go with something a little bit easier for us to deal with. These fixtures here are just 55 gallon plastic drums cut in half. And then we actually have three different eye bolts we secure to the back side of them. And those eye bolts secure directly to the pig panels. Those stay nice and secure and the pigs don't beat them up. Now these pigs are being raised for production. So we have to prepare to take them to the butcher. What you'll see behind me here is a shoot setup that we've designed. We've been using it very effectively for the last several years. What we do is we set this up with larger cattle panels to make it easier and more secure as we're loading. Very easy to set this up as an extension to the two pins. We separate out the four to five pigs we're taking at any given time. We open up the chute area to them about two weeks in advance. We start feeding them inside the trailer itself so they get used to being inside the trailer. And then essentially once we get to the point where we need to take them to the processor, they essentially auto load right into the trailer and we can close it right behind them. Makes it a whole lot less stressful for everyone involved. One of the big advantages to using T-posts and pig panels and having everything temporary it's very easy to tear down. We've used this essentially semi-permanent enclosure in order to prep areas that we're gonna plant behind. When we first got on the property in 2019, going into 2020, we fought our, brought our first set of pigs onto the farm. That area now is actually our berry cane patch where we have sorghum, some berries, and things like that. 
and also actually some annual crops were growing in that area. The second year we set it up where we're now actually growing and raising all of our turkeys. We have a turkey pasture that we've been now established in that area and our Thanksgiving turkeys are raised there. So we raise multiple types of breeds each season and we found that all of them actually do really well. These are all heritage, full-size large breeds. Today we've got some Berkshires sleeping. We've got a red wattle that you can't quite see. There's a Chester white behind me here that's eating. Now, in addition to these breeds, we've also raised Yorkshires, some Herefords, some Polish Spots, and some Hampshires. We don't have those here on the farm today, but we've found that all of those breeds do really, really well for us. They grow rapidly, they're very active, which is very important for us. So when it comes to Arizona, a lot of our seasons are flip-flopped based on our weather. You know, we're very hot in the summer, still very cold in the wintertime. So one of the things that we focus on is timing with our pigs. We prefer to bring all of our pigs onto the farm in the middle of summer when they're small. So they're usually about two months old, typically about 50 to 60 pounds, sometimes you know, give or take 10 pounds or so. Those pigs are much better suited to our very, very hot weather in the middle of summer. Now, as those pigs grow, they get larger and larger. We give them a wallow when they're small, which is easy to manage when they're small. And then as they get older, we eliminate the wallow. It gets colder in the fall and winter, and those bigger pigs actually do much better in that colder winter weather. We get all of our pigs from small local breeders here in Arizona. One of the things that we love about that, number one, they do not vaccinate their pigs. Number two, they're acclimatized to our climate and our weather. So those things are very important to us when it comes to our pigs. So pigs eat, and they eat a lot. Well, they eat like pigs. So we found that there's a couple things that we prefer to feed them. Number one, bagged feed. Obviously, when you're dealing with pigs, bagged feeds are really designed to encourage healthy pigs and make sure that they grow really well for you. Now, the cost is very, very expensive. And so what we've tried to do is we've tried a couple different bulk feed options. Now, one of those was a brewer's grain that we were getting from some local breweries here. We found that in the very beginning, the small piglets did pretty good on it. But as they got older, they really stopped showing interest in that feed. So I don't know about what continued that. But one of the other things that we found that they do really well with is in this barrel here. So this is a bulk feed that we get here in Arizona. You'll see this is whole corn and the pigs absolutely love this. So we found that a combination of this whole corn and some bagged feed mixed in has done really well for us in getting solid growth and healthy pigs. Of course, one of the advantages to having a farm is we have a lot of scraps that come off the farm that we can use as fodder for our pigs. We fed them weeds, we've got our moringa trees that grow. They eat everything when it comes to the br branches and everything on the moringa trees, they love that. And also anytime we've got anybody locally here that's got extra produce that they're not gonna use, we'll utilize that as well. This year we got uh, some pumpkins for them and man, they just love the pumpkins. So all those things get added into the mix when it comes to our pigs, just to make sure they're as healthy as they possibly can be. So I wanted to get Lori in here because the, the why is important to you, right? As much as it is to me. So, you know, talk a little bit about the reasons why we're raising these pigs here on the farm. There's one reason I know in particular for you that's very important. Yeah, the biggest reason for me is I want to know where my food's coming from. So as far as the animals, I'm gonna eat meat either way. And so I would rather know how they were raised, um, how they were treated, how they, what they ate. So that's really important to me. Yeah, and I know for me, how they're treated, I mean, that's one of the things that we really focus on here on the farm. Speaking of treated, what's up, buddy? Bruno's gonna say hi. I think we got two more coming. But one of the things about um, all the animals here on the farm, you know, a lot of them are livestock, but the reality is, you know, y you need to treat your animals right. I mean, mm -hmm. one of the challenges that I think we all have here, not just here, but around the world, is how animals are treated in captivity and particularly livestock, you know, pigs in particular are just treated horribly, yeah. you know, in mass production. And we're just not interested in being a part of that. So we try to remove ourselves from that. And, you know, we have a lot of customers that come to us and are like-minded. And so that feel the same way. 
you know, obviously here we give updates as often as we can. You guys see how we raise our pigs. We're showing you here today. So you can actually literally see where um, that's coming from. And of course, it's very important for us as well. So now we had mentioned a little bit about the fact that we bring our pigs in from local providers. And so those are, these are local um, small farms that are raising these piglets and they don't use vaccinations. So they're not vaccinating their animals. Um, I know I feel very strongly about that. I know a lot of folks out there do as well. Um, so none of our pigs are vaccinated. Um, they never have any antibiotics or medications of any kind. So, you know, we show you how we raise them. The pigs that are here, they're raised on similar farms. So, you know, they're used to being out in the open. You know, they run around, they're rooting around. You know, they're doing things pigs do to stay healthy. That's all important. They need the sunshine. You know, they need, they need an environment that is suited to, to them and their needs. And so that's very important as well. Most pigs in, are raised in, in production or raised in captivity. They're inside large houses and barns. You know, when you have that many animals that close together, you're gonna have to add up, have antibiotics and vaccines and things like that because there's so many of them crammed in there. Our pigs are not, you know, we clean up after them. We um, have the manure removed from the pens. We're obviously nice and dry, so we don't have parasite issues or anything like that. And you know, if we have a pig that's not doing well, sometimes we lose them. Yeah. I mean, the reality is there are times we do. And you know what? We don't typically know why, but the reality is we don't want to have a pig that's not healthy going into, you know, our food. You know, we're just not interested in that. So, you know, that's very important to us as well. So we have these mobile pens that we can easily move. Every season we've come behind them, we've started planting in those areas and we're getting great production mm -hmm. in those areas behind those pigs. So having that semi-permanent um, infrastructure has worked great for us, really helped us establish the growing part of the farm. So one of the great parts about having them on the ground, they dig and of course they're eating and doing all these things to prep the soil. But the big part of that is what comes out of their back ends. So what you see behind me here is 20 pigs worth of manure in one season for us. So this obviously is raw pig manure. What we'll be doing here over the next several weeks is we'll be mixing this with wood chips and eventually this will become a wonderful compost and fertilizer that we use for all of our fruit trees around the farm. So not only do we have the pigs prepping the soil for us, planting behind them, we also utilize their manure come behind them and that manure is spread throughout the farm. One of the great parts about using animal manure, animal manure, pig manure in particular, is worms love it. And if you guys are gardeners and fruit tree fans, you know that worm castings is about as good as it gets. So of course, the last reason of why we raise pigs here on the farm is income. You know, one of the things that we are focused on here as a sustainable farm. You know, when we talk about sustainability, obviously one of those things is income. You know, it has to be able to sustain us and all of the things that go on around the farm. And pigs are a very important part of that. So obviously we sell the meat. We actually are starting to raise Cooney Cooney pigs. So a smaller homestead sized pig that we'll be utilizing for workshops and selling piglets and things like that. So. You know, these animals are a part of the farm itself and the income of the farm to allow us to continue to do the things that we're doing here in the desert and sharing with you guys. So hopefully you can tell we're very passionate about raising pigs here on the farm in the desert. We've got some unique challenges, but in the end, they're just a wonderful thing to have here on the farm and a great source of protein for all of our customers. So just wanna thank you for joining us today. If you haven't done so already, subscribe to the channel. We cover a lot of things here on this newly established functioning farm in the Arizona desert and would love to see you on a regular basis. If you have any questions or comments, those go in the comment section down below. And our Amazon shop, I'll leave a link down in the description. That's a free painless way to help support the channel. If you start with the link down below, it doesn't matter what you buy, you help to support us here. So just wanna thank you for joining us today and remind you if we can farm on the edge of nowhere, so can you. So what I wanna do for you guys today is talk a little bit about the how and the why we grow grow. <laughs> Give him back to me. Oh my goodness. <laughs> Remember talking about all the boys being needy? Yes, I know. I'm one of those. Yes, you are. <laughs>